Hey, if you love the Sunday Night Talk on the Running Back Network, take a moment and give my channel a subscribe. That's right. Give it a subscribe. Give the videos a like. That way, it carries on. I see that the channel's growing. And guess what? I'm adding more stuff to it all the time. So I appreciate the effort. Tonight's show of the Sunday Night Talk, Omar Carmona joins me on a truly emotional Sunday night. My team took a hard, hard loss. Carmona's team somehow fell ass backwards into a bed of roses. We're going to talk about it. We're going to talk about all the games as it turns out. We're going to do a special ranking of the top five most handsome quarterbacks in the league. We're going to take a look at some listener submissions to the show as well. Not to mention, we're going to wrap it all up with the awards for week two. Interesting stuff. I'm not sure I fully turned the corner emotionally on this week. Well, give a listen. You're going to see why. Before we get to the show, I want to thank everybody who came out this last Friday night and saw me doing live stand-up comedy out here on the West Coast. Ended up being a really great show and have more on the books coming up, so I appreciate that. Be on the lookout. Got shows coming. They're all great shows, and I enjoy the effort when you come out. So, let's get to the show, the Sunday Night Talk with me and Omar Carmona on a week two. Talking games. I'm in a mood. Well, you'll see why. Let's start the show. All right, it is Sunday night. Omar Carmona is here. I am recording this 818 West Coast time. We just finished Bears Packers. I don't think I can remember a Sunday I renounced football so many times. Omar, welcome to the show. And can I quit football? But welcome, Omar. Welcome to the oh, show. So cool. Thank you. Thank you again. It's great to be here. Obviously, I'm happy to be here. 49er victory this, this week. Um, you know, it, it, uh, but I feel bad for you, Pat. That was a very brutal, brutal uh, Las Vegas Raiders loss. I'm sorry. I, I saw somewhere that it may have been the biggest fourth quarter collapse in Raiders history. Well, whatever it was, it was bad. And, you know, <laughs> I'm wearing my my ridiculous getup because I, I feel like I have to hide my identity from the rest of the world after oh, after this loss. Like, I, I'm not proud of what, what I have become. I don't know if I can blame this on my parents or somebody else. But are you are you are you saying that you 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 hold some people responsible responsible for not steering you away <laughs> from the Raiders? Here's how I felt today. Uh, we're up twenty to zero, and I instantly get a big head. I'm like making Instagram posts. I'm having a good time. I purposely don't text you because I don't want to jinx it, but I'm still feeling like, oh, great, we're going to be one and one. And then the collapse starts to happen, and I take it so personal. Like I feel like it's going against me. I don't know how you feel. Yeah. I felt like, like I was in the Truman Show, and the world was collapsing against me to just to get my reaction. I felt like Ed Harris was in the control room, and he was like, let's see what happens if we get Renfro to fumble two times. Right. Let's see how Pat will react. Let's see how angry he will be. So I took it personal, and then I feel like the whole team quit. I feel like the universe will not let me have a good Sunday. No. And I feel I feel like an idiot for backing backing my Raiders team. And that's why I'm in disguise for, for this show. Although, after my rant, now I, I think I'll go back to regular. But that, that, that's what, that was my Sunday. That was terrible. Like, I'm going to walk around like this all day. Yeah, I don't blame you. That, that was a, it was very painful to watch. Obviously, I could focus on that game since my game wrapped up pretty much, you know, sometime in the third quarter, my game was wrapped up. If I was in the eighth grade and this game happened, I would ask my mom if I could stay home from school the next day. Oh, that it was terrible, you know, and I, mm. you know, it was it was inexcusable. I, I just, you know, those fumbles at the end and, you know, just not moving the chains when they had to, you know, but no one showed up clutch. Oh, it was bad. Well, let's just start with that with that game so I can get my thoughts out of the way and then uh, 
and then we can move on to to bigger and better things hopefully it was all right let's talk about it it's 20 to 0 raiders are up i'm i'm making instagram stories like i think we're going to win the super bowl or something i i should have known something was up when josh mcdaniels is wearing a hoodie but he's rolled the sleeves up but he has a long sleeve shirt underneath that hoodie yeah that was a little weird and he has a visor on yeah. <laughs> for an indoor stadium. I should have known something was up. It's twenty to zero. It's like it's like he had his Denver Broncos attire on. You know mm. like, what is that? You know that's that's for the mile high. It was the universe was fully against me when Kyler Murray had that like thirty second runaround play oh, for the two point conversion. That was so painful. My son was going crazy. Obviously, my son's a pa- uh, a Cardinals fan, and and so. You can only imagine he was, you know, he should have been sacked twice on that play, and and did he, the the Raiders just didn't have the legs anymore. Yeah, it it was it was so reminiscent of that Chargers game last year, at the end of the season to get into the playoffs, where the defense is out there and the rush is non-existent, and wherever Kyler Murray put the ball, it was a catch. Oh, eight yards. Oh, fourteen yards. No problem. Oh, run out of bounds. Everything was working. Also, that that holding penalty, you know, at the end, you know, it's just God. You 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 make a stop and you give up a a terrible holding. But that's what that's what athletic quarterbacks can do if you buy enough time. You know, eventually the referees are going to catch a, a a a shoulder pad, you know, grab a, a collar, you know, a collar pull. It's going to happen. It is, and it's not like we didn't have a sliver a sliver of hope. Because not only does it take two touchdowns, two two-point conversions, which they get both times. Right. We go into overtime. We get kicked in the nuts. We don't win the coin toss. Right. However, we stop them on what might have been the most heart attack-inducing fourth down play. Right. Where the Cardinals are, are roughly, roughly midfield, and they go for it like on fourth and four. And the Cardinal guy is wide open. And the Raider guy lays, the safety lays a hit on him to jar the ball away. Like, that was a catch. That was a catch. He jars the ball away. We get the ball on downs. We're like, we need 30 yards for a field goal attempt. This is, we're going to escape. We're going to escape. Renfro fumbles the ball. Somehow it gets recovered. And usually usually he's just so sure-handed, you know. Fumbled last game, too. Yeah, and then, but, you know, and. Ugh, I don't know. You know, you think that putting this up and coming just PPR machine Renfro with you know Devontae Adams, you just think that you know the the the, the air attack would just open up, you know, and in the first half this Hollins guy is running all over the field. He I'm like, we we got a third gem. Moreau yeah. is catching passes, Waller is looks awesome this year, and then in the second half I don't know what happened. They go into, uh, let's throw the ball into the dirt and let's punt it every single time. And then um, the the next play, I think, is an incomplete. And in the play after that, Renfro gets the ball, oh. makes a second effort, fumbles the ball, and it gets run back for a touchdown, game over, get off the... I'm, I'm so glad I didn't buy a Renfro jersey last year. Remember that was the jersey I was going to yeah, buy? That was the one you wanted. You know, how do you feel? I mean... After all this, and now you've had several years to really process the Derek Carr evolution. Is he your guy still, or are you almost at like the the point where the Falcons were with Matt Ryan last year? It's time to move on. He had a career year last year. It's hard to hard to say this is a make or break year. I don't know who it's make or break for. Coaching? We've been through a million coaches. We had the we had Edward James almost last year. <laughs> we yeah. had Gruden. Gruden had to go because of PR. So it, it seems like we have haven't got it out of the blocks in going on five plus years. McDaniels is a good coach. I mean there's potential there, but this is this was a kick in the nuts. And even the worst thing is as the Cardinal guys running back the fumble for the touchdown. There was some guy on the sideline in a suit (laughs) running with him, cheering. I don't know if you saw that, like he was running with them. And it was, it was just like, how could we have played any worse in the second half? It was 20 to zero. And in the second half, they score 
three points. Devontae Adams had two catches. That, two I, catches. What was that? What was that? And it's not like we weren't running the ball well, too. It was like, right. just just run the ball. We need to kick a field goal. We'll steal this one. We will steal this one. It was just like everybody went to sleep. It was like at halftime, everybody took a gummy and got all lack- lackadaisical in the second half. It was like, yeah, but we're up so much. We'll just punt. And then, uh, you know, we'll uh, play some D. They, they won't score on us that many points. And, and then, uh, oh, look up, and guess what? They are, and the game is won. Get the hell off the field. But the, the two Renfro fumbles, I think, were just... Uh, you, weren't, you, weren't gonna, you weren't gonna come back from those. We're not gonna come back from that. Like, this was this was solely, not solely his fault. The, the end of it was his fault. But, like, you couldn't put it on Carr like you, like you could last game. I guess you could put it on the defense a little bit because they just could not get a stop. Now, we're not now, stopping anybody. At, and we're gonna we're gonna talk about this, you know this this you know. The, it always seems like every year, uh, you see all these announcers and all they're doing, you you hear them and all they they're doing is quoting, you know, the stat of zero and two teams have a ten to eleven percent chance of going to the playoffs. That's every announcer and every game, every network. It's all about the zero and two start. How are you feeling at zero and two? Is there? Uh, is there well, still some optimism? Well, I told you I renounced football. Can I, I like? Can I just take a? Can I quit football? You like can. next week? Ne- next week, I'm not watching the game. I'm not watching any Raiders games. I'm not watching NFL Sunday Ticket. I'm just going to whatever is on network. I'm just going to watch it, and I might not even put the sound on because right. I can't take it. I can't take it. It feels like a personal attack. I told you, it feels like I'm in the Truman Show, and as soon as I start enjoying the game, it flips. Because well, I can't, I can't have fun. The aside, fun is not allowed for me on Sundays. Aside from, I mean, I'm sorry, and you maybe just need a few days, but we got, we got plenty of other great football to talk about tonight. Yeah, yeah, that that is true. It, after an hour or two, I felt a little better, mainly in the sense that I realized football does not matter in the grand scheme of life. That's where I had to go. I had to go philosophical to get well, it out of you me. Know, I'm telling you, this path, this this. You know, meditation and all that, it's its its fantastic. It helped me come to a lot of terms uh, uh, this week with a lot of stuff. And next thing you know, I'm back with Jimmy G. Yes. All right. Well, that's my Raiders rant. Let's mo- now we can move on to other games. Good slate of games. There were, well, I guess we can start with I mean, let's start Sunday with the night. Game of the week. Let's start with the game of the week. The game okay. of the week. Dolphins Ravens that was a fantastic fantastic game that you know Tua showed me something Tua really really showed me something and he's got probably arguably the best receiving core in the in the in the league and it's it's hard to imagine but you know you put Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddle those burners that that they they may be a really dangerous team uh the Miami Dolphins now that they're sitting at 2 and 0 Six touchdown passes Tua had. Six of them. And Tua really got buried during the week. I, You know, one one show was like, Tua's a great backup. Tua's going to be a great backup. You know, that was that was one. And I just, it was, it was the Tua show. It was like the coming out party for the Tua show. You know what? It was 40. That was one where, who came back? Baltimore came back. Well, Baltimore came. Well, Baltimore yeah, came uh, back Baltimore on that came one. Came back on that one. Uh, no, 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 no. Wrong way. Uh, Miami came. back. Oh, Miami came back. Miami came back. No, Miami came back at the very end. I mean, they came back. They were down twenty-eight-seven. That's right. Yeah, Miami's the one that came back. Yeah. On them, and then Tua went nuts, and then at the end of the game, I don't, I don't know if you watched the Hail Mary. You know, like you know, they they go back, they throw a bomb. Lamar threw a Hail Mary that was a bullet. <laughs> I don't know if you saw that. Yeah. It didn't go very high. He just bulleted this Hail, Hail Mary. They got knocked incomplete. So Tua at one and one now, that might have been, was that the biggest flip of the week, do you think, for one and one teams? Well, well, now Miami's 2-0. and oh. Oh, sorry. They're two zero. They beat who did they, they beat, beat last they week? Beat the Patriots. They beat, they the, beat the Patriots. They, they always right. beat the Patriots. They they beat the Patriots right, and we all said, yeah, but it, it they didn't look that good. That's right, but they but, won. But now you know. Now you have a, a Miami team that beat has beaten the Patriots and the Ravens back to back. 
those are big wins to start the year. I'm sure they are not, you know, they got their held, their their heads held high this evening. Uh, that's a team to look out for. Uh, another 2-0 team we got to talk about, the the Giants. Well, what's going on over there in New York? All of a sudden, they got this Coach Dabble, and there's some energy there, and, 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 and they actually look like they have a competent team. And, the only it's the only game I didn't watch uh, today, and and I wish I had. I wish I switched the Raider game for this game, because that was close. Carolina. Now we got Baker Mayfield staring at zero and two. Nah, uh, he's zero and two. All right. Saquon Barkley. We got to have the Dan- Danny Jones conversation now. Yeah, yeah. They're they're in it. He looked. I mean, I saw watch the highlights. There were some good highlights in there. So now with the Giants, now we got to talk two and O Giants. So okay, so let's up. let's think. Let's go back to Week One. Should we just call Week One whatever is between the preseason and the regular season? Like the season's so long that can we just throw out Week One? Kind of like uh, when you awkward, when you take the average. You know, it's so weird. Then then there's two Monday night games tomorrow. I, it's a weird week. It's a really weird week. I I found this on the schedule. There are three Mondays this year that have two Monday night games. Um, so that's kind of strange. I, I have, we don't know how it's going to go because we don't know if they're on, on, it was one on ABC and one's on ESPN one's on or ESPN, they bo- one's ESPN, one's ABC. Gotcha. So that's how they're going to, that's how they're going to work it. Who are those games again? I totally forgot. Okay. I, it's going to be the Titans going to Buffalo and then it's going to be, um, I don't, I don't know who's home. Uh, I think it's Eagles at Minnesota. Right, right. It is, uh, it's Philly and Minnesota. Right, so we have a treat of two Monday night games tomorrow. Um, Giants. Okay, so we got Giants in a division that all of a sudden is totally winnable. <laughs> totally oh, winnable. Very winnable. With Philly, Giants, Dallas, Washington. Commandos. And then, and then co- the, the Commanders just looked just, just weak against the Lions. So, you know, it's going to be an interesting game tomorrow with the, the Vikings. Um and I'll go, and we'll do predictions before we sign off. But that's going to be a big game for them if they want to keep pace with the Giants and obviously Dallas moving to one and one. Um, I'm going to go out on a limb. Eh, 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 mark my words: NFC Championship game, San Francisco 49ers, but uh, led by Jimmy Garoppolo against the Dallas Cowboys, led by da- Cooper mm. Rush. Oh. Cooper Rush. All right, let's 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 tackle it right now. Seattle at San Francisco. We debated Jimmy G. Why is he there? Trey, it's Trey Lance's team. Well, keep him there. Oh, you can't keep him there. That's a cancer in the locker room. And the 49ers, I will say it, luck out by Trey Lance breaking his ankle on the second series of the game. And now Jimmy G has to come in. There's no like, oh, they replaced Trey. Oh, they it's time to make a change. No, they have to do it by circumstance. Right. And what happens? Jimmy G plays good and all is right in San Francisco. The luckiest scenario that could have happened, except for Trey Lance, of course, is <laughs> is fulfilled. He's on the sidelines and the teammates are are shaking his head. They're hugging him. They're kissing the guy. He's like the prodigal son who came back and they're like, Oh, so good to have you. This might be the best Sunday that Jimmy G has ever had. This is ridiculous. Ever. How did you get so lucky? You know, you know, but the thing is maybe Jimmy G is just better when he comes off the bench in a situation where not much <laughs> is it, not much is expected of him. It seems like when our expectations of hot are high is when he sinks. So I say we start a court. I say we start use check uh, our fullback as quarterback for oh. at least the first series, every game from here on out, then throw uh, throw in Jimmy G for the second series. Maybe he can be like a like a Mariano Rivera. Remember the yeah. awesome reliever from the Yankees back in the day, like where that. yeah, when he comes in, he's closing out. The game's over. Maybe that could be Garoppolo. He just comes in the the third series of every game. You know he what, can... Patrick? You got to mark that down as one of your brilliant rules proposals for every year. The, how about a rule? Where for like maybe seven minutes of the game, you have to be playing another quarterback. Oh, <laughs> like a closer, a closer type. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I have a lot of thoughts about NFL rule changes. Maybe I should throw this one in there, like the ability like to closer. bring in a relief. I like the closer, the a closer, two-headed, a two-headed monster type situation. I like it. And also, 
the closer has to run out from the tunnel. You know how the reliever runs out from the outfield? Right. <laughs> and and then they get to play some and, some some music for him. And maybe the coach is on the 50-yard line holding the game ball and has to take it away from the starter and Ooh. give it to the Oh, even better. Even better. Yes. Yes, I'm with this 100%. Bring in the closer. Bring in the Jimmy G, the closer to it. I mean, that was a game. So many games today had teams hanging around. It was a big lead, and they were hanging around. This is a game. The Baltimore one was a game. Even uh, Arizona was a game like this. Uh, Atlanta came back against LA this way. I think the Niners are up 20 to. Seven, 21 to seven, and then they get the block field goal. Seattle yeah. does run back for a touchdown. Biggest flip. They're going to score a touchdown. Oh, no, wait, they don't. And Seattle gets the touchdown. Yeah. So and then, uh, and then uh, Jimmy G just sort of gives them the chokehold and they come out, come out with the wind, with the wind. And then Trey Lance is out for the season. So we're, there's no like, oh, what if he comes back in four weeks? Do they play him? This, you, you have to be feeling lucky. Are you not feeling lucky that the situation happened the way it did? Extremely, extremely lucky, but extremely fortunate. We have a quarterback that has already led our franchise to two championship games, won a win there, so he has played in the Super Bowl. He backed up Tom Brady, so when it comes to experience coming off the bench... Extremely handsome. Extremely handsome. It's not going to get more experienced than Joe Burrow, I mean, sorry, the Jimmy Garoppolo uh, coming in. Yeah, and you know, uh, my as we stated last week, my girlfriend's boyfriend, Jimmy Garoppolo, uh, I know is, now, is now a prominent a starting quarterback in the league. So things, have, things are looking up for the San Francisco 49ers. Good and, win and, for and them, maybe, Seattle. What happened to Geno Smith? Remember, we're about and, to anoint him the six-man award last maybe. week. Things are looking up for the Niners and maybe not so great for your relationship. Is that fair to say? Mm, mm, that's fair. That is fair. He's, he's a starter. He's a starter. Every, everybody knows you have no chance against a starter. No, he's a starter. Jesus. No matter how ugly they are, they're, they're starters. Jesus, Jimmy G. Why do you have to do this to me? I, my Raiders lose the worst game ever, and he becomes a starting quarterback, and then everybody hugs him. On yeah, the sideline. Uh, Geno Smith did not look good. Uh, you know, it's just, it's just an underperforming uh, Seahawks team. I don't expect much from them this year. I think they got a they got extremely lucky last week, but you know, I don't expect much from you know the Broncos. But nonetheless, I think they got a little lucky. But um, uh, great, great, a very fortunate um, mishap for the 49ers this week. We're moving on. One That's one. probably the best the best way to say it. All right, you want to talk Sunday night or do you want to talk this Cincinnati Dallas? Uh, let's go. Craziness let's, let's, that let's, happened let's today. To the, let's go to the Dallas Cincinnati game because All right, good call. I mean, they're, they're, it's 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 America's team. I mean, we we we're, we we got to talk about it. How confident are you in Cooper Rush if you're a Cowboys fan? Going into the game, 5 5 out of 10? Not very. How much were you? No, probably even less, Pat. I was probably, I was probably <laughs> yeah. somewhere in the three, in the in the three uh, reading. Um, no, not very confident. But he looked he looked as as bad as good as you can. And, and, looked way and, better than Dak last week. Absolutely, absolutely. And and he was, and it wasn't that conservative of a play uh, uh, of a called game by the Cowboys either. So they they let him take some chances, and he thread some he thread some throws. Uh, you know to. Um, uh, C.D. Lamb had a few big ones. Uh, Schultz, uh, I know he got dinged up at the end, but but uh, he had some pretty pretty good throws, and so I was impressed. And now we're talking about this Super Bowl hangover where we were talking about last week, and now the Bengals are zero and two, and and they're not looking you know all that great. Yeah, the Bengals were really sluggish. That opening drive TD pass that Cooper Rush had. I, I think that was as good as an opening drive as any QB in the league. I think all the fans looked up from their beers and were like, wait a second, we got somebody here. That being said, he had like seven almost interception passes. He had a bunch that were like tipped or could like if they were just the uh, the DB was one beat quicker, they were taking it back for six. Right. He had a lot of close calls. And then Burrow, uh, this was a game where the other team hangs around, hangs around, hangs around. And then Burrow ties it, 
and then the Cowboys win it with the game-winning field goal, but sure. McCarthy almost blows it again with the timeouts. Did you see this where they get the first down, they have a timeout, Cooper Rush is going to spike it, they call timeout. So they waste their final timeout, and they have to run a play, and then luckily their field goal kicker makes the, the long kick. But And then McCarthy is staring up. <laughs> did you see he's staring yeah. up into space? Yeah, <laughs> like, I, oh, my God, did I get away with one? Yeah, he couldn't believe it. But but the Cowboys are back? You well, think the Cowboys are back? Let's get realistic about the Cowboys. What's When I say what back, do you think? I, think, I think they're going to – they do have talent. You you know, you can't look at this. Micah Parsons, my gosh, that guy – is, is, is a superstar already at such a young age. You know, I think that his leadership on that Dallas defense, you know, uh, Demarcus Lawrence still being there and all that, I just think you have a situation where I think they're going to be in the game, even with a backup quarterback. I think Dallas is going to be that team this year that every game it's going to come down to something at the end. I don't think they're going to get blown out this year. I don't think they're going to blow out many people this year. I'm just saying they're going to be that team that I think a lot of their games are going to go down to the, the, to the fourth quarter. And with Pollard and the Zeke combo, that was working. Pollard had some great runs. He had the one long run for the touchdown. If they can run like that, and then they got the defense, like they were swallowing up Burrow yeah. all game long. And Cooper Rush was more than adequate managing the sure. game. Of course, he's like had all the near interceptions, but... They looked good, and then like when the Bengals were gonna come back on them, like they stood tough. They made the big field goal despite Mike Mike McCarthy trying to screw his own team by calling timeouts. Yeah, they pulled it off. That was a big, big roar from the crowd when that field goal went through. Which I thought he missed it. Did you think he missed it? I thought he missed it too. Yeah, I the did. angle. We still don't have good angles when it comes to field goals on TV of what what is good and what is not. All right, that was Cincinnati, Dallas. Unless you have something else, um, what else did I watch? Oh, okay. <laughs> New York Jets. Back to the early games. New York Jets at Cleveland. The return of Flacco, as I will call this oh game. Oh my God! And Where did know, he come out of? You know, I've been down on the Jets a lot more than the show's been in existence. I've just always hated them, but. Dang, they, that was a resilient, resilient effort today. That's the first time I've said resiliency and <laughs> Jets in the same paragraph. But Interesting. Yeah, Flacco, but, like, not only is he old, I think he wears an old helmet, too. Like, his chin strap looks, it has the one that has, like, the two buckles on the side. All of them have the upper and the lower these days. Flacco has the old school, too. You know, and, but, but people don't realize... At one point in time, Flacco was the highest paid player in the league. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? He perfected the throw it deep and get a pass interference call. <laughs> like one out of three tries. He would always he would always get it. I, I or, turned or, it or, on. Or, or remember that year that they played the Broncos? That was it 2012 oh, yeah. playoffs. And, and that that the Hail Mary was just so lucky because the, the, the D B just totally miscalculated you know, mm. his angle at the ball. I probably should have had an interception going the other way. But, yeah, you're right. I mean, it just seems like Flacco, things bounce in, in, in Flacco's favor. Uh, this was a week for the for the uh, backup quarterback, Cooper Rush. Really Flacco uh, filling in. Jimmy G filling Cooper, in. Cooper Rush filling in. Yeah. It, I-, I turned the game on. Tell me if you like this as much as I do. They're playing at Cleveland. The Jets score a touchdown. And then they cut to the sole Jets fan in the Cleveland stadium <laughs> cheering. Right. Yeah. And everybody's giving them dirty looks. I love when they do that. I love that. And then I listened to the second half on the radio. I did the local radio. And I can't find any games. Only station I can find is essentially the NFL red zone of radio. And they just cut to games. With, with, with Bill Lekas. <laughs> okay. Do you know Bill Lekas? I, I know I threw the show. Okay, Bill Lekas, for those who don't know, sounds like Chris Mad Dog Russo. They have the same speech impediment, and he drives me absolutely bonkers. There's two of them, and the one guy just sort of brings up a subject. Bill Lekas says something completely asinine, and the other guy just keeps rolling. It's, it's like, like morning radio when essentially they say nothing for four hours. 
Somehow radio people have found a way to fill empty space with absolute verbal nothing. I'm listening to it, and the one guy's like, okay, coming back from Carolina where the Giants are in the lead. Bill Lake is like, yeah, you, yeah, you know, uh, if, if uh, one thing about the Giants, if they can keep, it, keep the ball on the ground, keep time possession, they got a good chance. Good call, Bill. Let's go to, let's go to New Orleans where uh, Jameis Winston yeah. is on the field. You know, think about uh, um, New Orleans. If they, they can get a lead, but they can't, they, they got to be able to hold it. All right, good call, Bill. It's absolutely nothing. He says nothing. It's right. it's like your brain is being choked out. It drives me bonkers. You know me. I don't get offended by anything, yet everything annoys me. And I'm listening to this radio broadcast, and I'm getting so pissed off. And then they go to the local Jets radio, and Flacco throws a touchdown pass, and the announcer goes, it's caught. We got a touchdown. Flacco, baby, Flacco. And I'm like, okay, now this is interesting radio. Yep. They're actually invested in this. Bill like is, I, I don't know why he says things. He has absolutely nothing. He says radio people say nothing. And yet somehow oh, they have jobs for 30 plus years. One of his, one of his calls was... Oh, that's a great run. You see, you get the defense going one way, you cut back, there's a lot of room back there. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, no that's, shit. That's that's how the cutback works. <laughs> <laughs> I'm that, pulling pulling my hair out you, of my car. That's why you cut back. <laughs> <laughs> Bill like is to say something, something, make a stand, something. He's absolutely nothing to say. And then the other guy, of course, is like, good point, Bill. Let's go down to Seattle. <laughs> That was that was my local radio rant. I think I think you could shove you and me in any booth. I think we could do a better job. I really think we would be, but unless the job is to be absolutely neutral about absolutely everything. Right, right, right. Okay. Right. Beyond that, I have no thoughts on the matter. Next game. <laughs> Let's. Uh, I could have played myself off to some um, to some music on that one if I there if I go. had the wherewithal to hit the button. New England, Pittsburgh. Interesting thing about this game. I don't know if you noticed this. NFL Sunday ticket was down for a few hours earlier in the day. So you couldn't watch any games on Sunday ticket. And I was forced to watch New England Pittsburgh. <laughs> it was it was like watching Memento. <laughs> it was, it was wow. boring and it was just talking. I don't know what was going on in that game. I I saw a, I, I saw a stat or um, heard a stat. The first time since 1998 these two teams played and either Roethlisberger or Tom Brady was not a starting quarterback in the game. Crazy. Right. Cordell Stewart versus Drew Bledsoe. <laughs> Slash. Last time it was, they, they did not have both, uh, uh, Roethlisberger or, um, uh, Brady. Wow. It was 10 to three at halftime. And even that took a long bomb by the Patriots to get to that score. I don't know what I, you know, the only thing I enjoyed about this game was there was a commercial that reminded me of, of me being a kid. It was for Bush beer and it said head for the mountains of Bush. I was like, Oh yeah, I remember that commercial. Yeah. That was great. That was a great commercial. And it was a beer. They put a beer in, in a mountain range. <laughs> I don't know why I get a kick out of it. There was one point in that game. I'm watching it because I'm forced to watch it because Sunday ticket is down and I think it's New England. They do a one-yard run. Then they have a false start. Then the play clock runs out. They take a timeout. There was seriously six minutes of non-football in this game. And even then, Pittsburgh is trying to give this game away so bad. Trubisky's getting sacked, getting out of field goal range, uh, throwing that, near no, picks. That's another one. <laughs> that I, was I don't bad. Know, I don't know what Pittsburgh was thinking going after Trubisky. Uh, they should have went after Garoppolo. Well, maybe they should have gone after Garoppolo. But, or maybe you just like throw this picket kid in from the get go and see how he does. I, I just, I, I don't see the point in bringing in Trubisky because I don't even think he's good enough to be a mentor to a young quarterback like, like Pickett, you know? So I don't know I, either. I, I, I figure just put, let's just put Pickett in if you're a Steelers fan and see what happens. I don't know. I, I feel like Mitch Trubisky is the Nicole Ritchie of quarterbacks. Somewhere along the line, someone told us Nicole Ritchie was hot, and we all believed it. And no one asked why. Right. It was like, Trubisky's a starter. And we're like, yeah, he's a starter. No, he's not. <laughs> Who told yeah. you he was a starter? Right. That's that, a, that's was, 
that was a forced watch with NFL Sunday ticket. Uh, other early game, Tampa Bay, New Orleans. Tampa Bay wins 20 to 10. That they look they looked lifeless for oh you know more than you know about two and a half quarters. They finally got some a field goal on the board, um, and then and then you know just I think it was three to zero at halftime. Yeah, it was three zero at halftime. <laughs> that was bad. It just was not looking good um, for for the for the Buccaneers. They couldn't get anything moving. But hey, you know I think that's another team that God you know people were hurt. You know uh, Mike Evans gets ejected. Julio Jones is hurt. They still don't have uh, Godwin back. I mean, their top three receivers are gone, and Tom Brady still finds a way to win. So, you know, you're not going to be able to count this team out. I think that is a stout defense. Uh, I, I, I think... Tampa uh, Bay. Yeah, I think it's a very... They, they forced a lot of turnovers, um, uh, two second-half turnovers uh, from Jameis Winston. So I, I thought they did, a, they did an excellent job just keeping Tom in the game. Huge brawl. I love the brawl. I don't think we've seen one like that no, in a long did time. You see what, what, uh, what Mike Evans said? He's like, what, what'd you do? I, like, I don't know, man. They hit Tom Brady. Like, what am I going right. to do? <laughs> Just sit there? <laughs> you, 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 can't let, you can't let anybody touch Tom Brady. You right. cannot. You get kicked out. You get kicked out. When you stop anything from, from uh, happening to our Lord and Savior, Tom Brady. Let, let me ask you a hypothetical. If Tom Brady doesn't win that first Super Bowl at Tampa Bay, do you think he would have came back for that second season? Uh, it, meaning, he made it to the Super Bowl but lost. Let's say he or made he it and lost. It to the Super Bowl. Yeah, let's say he made it and lost. Do you think he comes back? I still think he comes back. I just, I and I think you know we we heard reports this last week about. Tom, maybe, you know, this is, this is gossipy, but, and it's no one else's business, but, you know, Tom Brady not living in the same house as uh, Giselle Bunchen and, you know, their, their marriage, and again, no, no one's business, but theirs, but I mean, if this is true, maybe, maybe Tom just likes, just, it, 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 he's addicted to it, you know, he's addicted to the Sundays, yeah. and he's addicted to the season, he's addicted, and there are people like that, and and so all the money in the world, all the relaxation, I don't have to do, you know, no more practices, no more camps, no more traveling. I can stay home for Thanksgiving and Christmas. You know, maybe he'd go nuts if he doesn't have it in his life. So I don't know. I, I think there's something to that. He retired for, what, 26 days? <laughs> he was yeah. like, I can't take this shit no more. Right. I'm coming back, baby. <laughs> So I, I think he's one of these crazy, focused, obsessed guys. And he, I don't think there's anything else going on in his head besides the game. But he did take the time because he's got a silent, a silent track record of hot chicks, though. So I do think there's other stuff in his head. You know, he has a kid with actress Bridget Moynihan. Moynihan, who's that? He, who's who's, he obviously put in some work to get with and marry Giselle Bunchen. But maybe, maybe he feels like he's accomplished everything he needs to in the, in the hot chicks department, and it's been all football for the last five years, and he, he doesn't want to stop. That's none of our business. <laughs> of course. <laughs> uh, did we do all the late games? I think, I, I think so. Yeah, I think we did all the late games. Uh, okay. Not, well, that not brings us to... to about, not much to talk about with the Denver Texans, only you know, Russell Wilson doesn't look great. He doesn't, right. look, he doesn't look great. Oh, Jacksonville. Oh, uh, Jacksonville. They oh, Pat, break them up. Uh, 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 is it is it too is it way too early? Mm. Or maybe are the Colts just that bad? Are right. I have it in my notes. Is Jacksonville good or is Indy bad? Well, that's the second straight week. Mm -hmm. But Indy lost to a non-playoff team from last year. You know so. Not lost. I think they tied with. I, I should let me take that back. They tied the Texans uh, last week, but still games that you would think on your schedule, being that you know this is Indianapolis. We've been a playoff team last couple seasons. You would think you see Texans, Jacksonville. Although I saw that I think this is the eighth straight game that uh, Jacksonville has beaten Indianapolis in Jacksonville. So I don't think hmm. they've had they've had much success since 2015. Um, uh, but. Again, you would think that these are games that a playoff team like Indianapolis 
with that running game and Jonathan Taylor. You bring a, a veteran in like Matt Ryan. You have a great offensive line, a stout defense. You would think that you should be sitting at 2-0 and right now. I mean, you just, you know, just based on the offseason hype, you would think that we'd be talking about a 2-0 and team, aside, you know, and not 0-1-1. and Yeah. I mean, we're getting into it where once we get five or six games in, the the team with the losing record starts looking at their losses and they look for the one score loss oh. loss games and they say like oh we lost these three games by one score we could be eight and three <laughs> you know but the flip side is that yeah no you just lose games <laughs> you right. could say that you could say that about a good team like oh you flip these one score wins you could be three and eight I always like that glass half full arguments like well we only lost we lost five games by one score we could easily have won those games like no you lose games <laughs> you've shown right. that you lose this game Indy looks like a mess the Matt Ryan experiment already is on shaky ground Ugh, Jacksonville so. maybe Jacksonville's good though maybe they got rid of the Urban Meyer dust that was on them maybe they have something I don't know I'm sure they play in London at some point this year yeah right well, that all leads us to Sunday night, Chicago at Green Bay. Collinsworth is officially back. And for some reason, we still call this game a rivalry, although I don't think the Bears have won in like 12 and a half years. Right. I know your disdain for Aaron Rodgers, but this is definitely one for your argument. I think they scored the first touchdown. And like, we don't have an award called the Douchey Award, but I'm going to add one for this week. They score a touchdown, and Aaron Jones puts on a big pair of Oakley sunglasses on the sideline, and Aaron Rodgers does the hair flip, where he's putting on his hat, and he did the like super douchey like hair flip to put on his hat. Oh, what's up? Uh, yeah, yeah. G- give us a demonstration. Here we go. Be Aaron Rodgers. Wow. <laughs> wow. wow. Aaron Rodgers, everybody. Very nice. <laughs> And then the Bears were in this for a second, right? They were. I I just, they had a lot of fight in them. I did, I did enjoy the play. That uh, that goal line stop at the end though, that, that, you know, that won the game. That was a difference right there. All right, let's cut to that right now. Where do you stand on the goal line stop? Did he get in? Did he Uh, not get in? I I, I can't, I can't fault him for seeing like that. Just, you know, obviously when the scrum is like that, you're going to have, it's going to be tough, whichever camera angle you can possibly find it's going to be tough and they, they didn't have a good angle. You mentioned my genius idea about the QB reliever coming into the game. You know, I don't like to toot my own horn, but I have a second genius idea, but I've pitched this one for a long time. <clears throat> you know, we have the replay and right. every time a replay happens, the announcer has to say, well, you know, if they don't see any irrefutable evidence, they right. have to go with the call on the field. Right. I say BS to that. This That is not objective. So that's why I say there should be a thing called the replay hostage. That's where we take an official, we put him in a 10 by 10 cell, we put a bag over his head, and when we need him, he has to come out of the cell and look at the play. He has no idea who's winning the game. He has no idea what the situation of the game is. He doesn't know what the call in the field is. And thus, he has to make a completely objective call. And it's called the replay hostage. And think how great it would be. He would come out of the cell and like he would be blinded by the daylight because he's been in a dark cell. I know, I like that. <laughs> he would be like... Yeah. And then he would go under the hood and he would be like, it was a touchdown or it was out of bounds. Like, what about that idea? Can we get a replay hostage? I like, let, let's put that down. Replay hostage. I like That's that. That's called the replay hostage. Yeah. He is, he's gagged and he has a bag over his head and he's in a cell with his, his hands tied behind his back. I think that would be excellent, excellent for the league. I did like eight minutes, eight minutes in, uh, left in the game. They show the, the Bears GM. And Chris Collinsworth already starts talking about next year. <laughs> I'm like, good God, we're, it's game game two, Collinsworth. We're talking about these Bears are going to be something in the next couple of years. They're, they're GM's 37. He's 37 years old. I'm like, geez, they got a whole season to go, Chris Collinsworth. Hell yeah. Well, that was our games. That was my depression for a Sunday in, in spite of your exuberance. 
of having quite luckily, quite quite possibly the luckiest roll of the dice. Maybe. Uh, for a week two. But let's go back to last week. We talked about the handsomeness of Jimmy G and how most, I told you my girlfriend loves Jimmy G and you agreed with her. You're like, hey, you can't do anything about that. Can't Just go look guy. So that being said, I have a ranking of my top five, and you have as well, top five most handsomest quarterbacks in the league. I got from five to one, and we can see where we stand on these. I think you're going to find a couple of mine pretty interesting. Do you want to go first, or should I kick us off? Kick us off. Kick us off. Number five, perennial favorite. I think he has to be in this list. Number five is Tom Terrific, Tom Brady. Now, He's a little bit on the older side, but I think he gets points like Brad Pitt would get points. He's okay. aging well. The skills that he has kind of give him a little bump up. The fact, the fact that he's going through marriage troubles, I think in some weird way, makes him more attractive to the opposite sex as well. Okay. Women, women have backwards brains like that. So I think Tom Brady has to be on my list. Number four, Jimmy Garoppolo okay. gets it. Now, starter again. what's interesting about Jimmy Garoppolo, he's getting a little gray in his hair. I don't know if you noticed that. He's, he's, he's going to go from good-looking man to George Clooney good-looking and not miss a beat. Number three. Oh, wait. Before I go to number three, I have an idea for an SNL character, and it's called Jimmy Garofalo. <laughs> and it's, it's Jimmy G just saying things Janine Garofalo would say, like in a coffee shop and stuff like that. I didn't really fully hash it out yeah hash that one out i haven't i haven't hashed it out number three aaron Rodgers. and i'm I'm gonna i'm gonna tell you why i'm gonna tell you why aaron Rodgers just needs a a woman to give him a little makeover he just needs that he needs to get the beard trimmed he needs to figure out his hair maybe like some like clothes and i think he is a number three on this list he needs a a lobotomy (laughs) Number two, Daniel Jones. If you look at Daniel Jones, he's he is one makeover away from being a debonair man. You know, remember remember Tom Brady when he was a rookie or it was his second year? He's not recognizable. You look at him and you look what he became. Probably, you know, he got some success. People got in his ear, like, hey, you should cut your hair. You should uh, get a grow a five o'clock shadow. You should um you should somehow inject stem cells and have your hair regrow at some point. <laughs> so I think Daniel Jones is in there. You need to take a second look at Daniel Jones on the handsome scale. Oh, okay, let's go to the next one. And number one, my most handsomest QB goes to Russell Wilson. Okay, I have him in my list. Clo- he got, he's got the cool clothes. He's good on the mic. He speaks eloquently. He's got the hot wife. Um... He dresses to the games. He goes to all the right parties, all the right award shows. Russell Wilson gets my number one most handsomest QB. Okay, give me I'll, your, give me your I'll, five. Okay. I'll, I'll, my, my number five, and he's only getting this because he barely makes it as a quarterback. Um, he is Mitch Trubisky. He's a good-looking guy. Wow. He's a, he's a, but I mean, he's, but why do you know, like Mitch Trubisky as a good-looking man? Yeah, I think you know he's got this. He's got this cool look. Um, hmm. but, but that's all he's good for. He's a terrible quarterback. So, you know, you know, that God didn't give him everything. Um, hmm. surprise. I'm already surprised by your list. Hey, Jalen hurts. I like, I, I dig the dreads. I really, really hmm. dig the dreads. I, I God, we are, we are so opposite on this list we so are. far. We are. Well, you know, you and I about to, uh, the, the, the top two are going to be the same. Josh Allen, just because he's my favorite quarterback in the league and the, I got to give him like some man prettiness points. Just, he, he gets me warm inside. You like yeah. the you like the blonde blue eyed look on a man. He's he's just he's just uh, you know he's he's got uh, brown brownish hair, but he's just I think you know he's he's got the height. Yeah, you know, he's, he's what six seven. I think he's the tallest quarterback in the league. Um, yeah, he's tall. Yeah, and he's he's just, he's just a tough guy. So he's like he's like the John Dutton, the Yellowstone guy from Wyoming. Um, oh yeah, he's rugged. He's very rugged. It's that, it's that rugged. So. Um, he's got that going for him. I'm with you, Russell Wilson, my number two. Uh, I... you know, just you know, he's he's you know, he's with uh, uh, 
uh, Ciara, you know, it's just, he's got He the would be the stuff. guy that you could bring home to mom, and that would be a win. Like, you would you do go. well right. if that was your right. guy. Well-spoken guy. He seemed to have kept, you know, he throughout his entire career, he uh, kept out of trouble. You know, Opens a door heard. for you. He just, just a good guy. And then, mm. last, I don't know why, I think the conversation should have been <clears throat> players not named Tom Brady who are handsome, because he is the GOAT, Tom Brady, number one. Tom wow. Brady. Tom Brady, number one. The age age doesn't bother you? It, 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 he's distinguished. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's fair. I got one honorable mention as well. Little, I did a little, a little digging for, for an honorable mention for my most handsome. Didn't make my top five, but honorable mention handsome quarterback Alex Smith. Alex oh, Smith okay. is a good-looking man. Good-looking good looking guy. Well, now we're, we're talking. We're talking. Now we got to go through all-time lists. Right. Yeah, I went all-time for my honorable mention. Why? Uh, do you have an all-time honorable mention? Uh, an all? No, I, I, I got I haven't really said that on my list for all-time quarterbacks or anything like that. So I, I, I got to really put some thought into that one. Okay. You're not. Don't just don't just throw out um, a good-looking quarterback unless you've given it some thought. Yeah, I got I got to think about that. All right. Well, before we get to the game. Um, we talked about last week, you've given up the drinking, you're centered, you're a new man, you've lost weight. We talked about the program and I put together a little something for you. Ah, I like it. I like it. Omar Carmona from the program, holding up a six pack, six pack of Sprite to the woman he is trying to court. It looks like I'm from Brooklyn. I don't look like a quarterback. <laughs> okay, so I bring up that photo. You know, I, I was work. I had this one in the mix. So I had that going. But it may surprise you. You know, there are fans of the show. And I had a couple of submissions okay. from some people that, you know, let me let me bring up a couple for you here. Oh, oh, oh. oh. Now, now, you're getting the theme, right? We have movies where alcoholism is a central theme in the movie. Yeah. I so like here it. you are as Andy Garcia comforting his alcoholic <laughs> wife, Meg yeah. Ryan, from When a Man Loves a Woman. Did you ever see this movie? I did, and it's it's a very sad movie. Yeah, not a happy movie. But, um, cause, you know, when that scene when the, the little girl, the, the, the oldest daughter, is like breaking bottles of booze out in the street with her old man. That was pretty, oh. that was pretty powerful. Jesus, um, man. But 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 this 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 looks like... I'm about to give Meg Ryan a roofie. <laughs> as, as a means of stopping her alcoholism or, yeah, just, it, or just, it, you're just a bad guy. It's yeah. I'm just a bad guy. Look, I, it just, and, it, and it looks like I'm posing for the, uh, the camera. So, um, I look like a creep next photo. <laughs> All right. We have a listener submission. Next photo. Oh. Take a look at this one. I, I, th this one, I look like that. I look clean and sober. This is a guy that's been clean and sober for about 13 months. He's losing some weight. He's got he's he's nailed that 80s sweater vibe. Yeah, I could feet. see you in this sweater. I, I I would love to have a sweater like that. Um, and then if I were if I were to have a sweater like that, I'd wear a nice watch instead of like a sports watch. I, I this guy. This is I I gotta save this. Um, I'll send it to you. You know, it's I never saw this movie, but this was one of those movies that was on the shelf of Blockbuster, and so you knew the title, you knew the picture really well. But I I never saw this movie. I don't know anything about Michael Keaton in Clean and Sober. This was pre pre Batman. Yeah, no, he was he was oh, it was yeah it was right before Batman. Um, this is actually another pretty sad movie, which is how he's trying to keep his life together, uh, and he was in a real um, shithole. But yeah, I, I did remember seeing this movie. Really? Was yeah. it good? It was okay. It was okay. Hmm. And then one more. Now this one, okay, this one is a bit. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> like, uh, come on, fans. Like, okay, oh, we got a star is born. Bradley Cooper is is uh, addicted there. But why you got to throw me in the mix? Why yeah, I don't know about that. I, why I you got to put our that. heads together like that? Uh, yeah, it's not bad. It's not bad. It was <laughs> oh, you're changing. You're changing your mind on this one. Yeah, I can, I, you know, I can live with that one. 
Look at look at you and me. You're you're trying to get your life together. You see some talent in me. You're oddly <laughs> in the movie. You're oddly attracted to me. This one might have crossed the line. I have to say, a star is born with Omar and I. So that was our that was our listener submissions <laughs> into the show. I think they were fun. I think some crossed the line. I think some hit home in some weird ways as well. For sure. All right, before we get to the awards, every week we have a game. Last week we did um, Whose Stat Is This? This week I have a new game for you, Omar Carmona. All right. Of Clean and Sober. <clears throat> this one is called Sunday's Best. Okay. Here's the intro. Many players in the NFL are religious. Specifically, most are of the Christian faith. Using their online profiles is one way to express that faith. Whether it's a Bible verse, an inspirational quote, or identifying as a believer, players like it to be known of their faith in a higher power. Of course, anthropologists state religion is a cultural cre uh, creation composed of myths, rituals, and symbols created by humans as a way of giving our lives individual and collective purpose instead of accepting a reality of being meaningless and insignificant. Okay, sorry about that. That second part was added on. So... Do you get the game? I am going to read you a NFL player's Instagram profile. Okay. And you're going to try and guess which player mm. this belongs to. Interesting. Okay, let's go. All right, here we go. First one. I'm going to give you a practice one to start. <clears throat> practice number one, Sunday best. Here is the quote. There is only one, and he took our place. Jesus is king. Does this belong to Hunter Renfro, Cooper Cup, or Julio Jones? I want to go. Ah, uh, I don't. I don't believe it's Julio Jones. Ah, uh, this is this is a tough one. I'm gonna go with Cooper Cup. You're going to go Cooper Cup. Is that your final answer? Final answer. Okay. The Instagram profile handle belongs to Hunter Renfro. Oh, wow. Good for him. Look at that. Well, where, where was this religious experience when you fumbled two times a day, Hunter Renfro? Right. Yeah. Sorry. All right. So now you get how the game is played. Yeah, I got let's, it. Yeah, let's continue. The quote is, believer, husband, father, does this belong to Matt Ryan, Jacoby Brissett, or Kirk Cousins? The first one was Matt Ryan, you said? Matt Ryan, Jacoby okay. Brissett, or Kirk Cousins? Which QB does believer, husband, father? I'm going to go with Kirk Cousins. You're going to go Kurt Cousins. Why, why are you picking Kurt Cousins? I know, I think I saw one where uh, some pregame show that had him on, you know, his old beat up, uh, beat up van that he still drives around like a 1993 Mark II or Mark III, whatever that van was called. Um, I what? To... A Mark III? <laughs> yeah. It was crazy. Um, yeah, I want to say, I want to say it's Kurt Cousins. Kurt Cousins for the win. You are correct. There you go. Look at that. He even threw in a Bible verse. Micah 6 8. Awesome. Mm hmm. All right. Continuing on. Your quote is Christ follower, husband, father, QB, outdoorsman, very average golfer. Does this profile belong to Carson Wentz, Jameis Winston, or Derek Carr? Derek Carr. I, that's the one I thought of before. That's Derek Carr's. Going Derek Carr's your final well, answer. That's no doubt. And I thought of that name. I was about to say you have to read three names. That's Derek Carr. Carson Wentz. Oh, I was so sure. Mm, you were very sure of that one. You were like Derek Carr all the way. All right. Final. Hey. Final Sunday's best quote is dreams come true when you capitalize on opportunity. Jesus is king. Does this belong to Joe Burrow, Trey Lance, or Russell Wilson? Russell Wilson. 
Russell Wilson, you seem pretty confident. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't see the other two talking, giving Jesus shoutouts. Russell. Russell Wilson, you got it right. There you go. Look at that. All right, that was Sunday's best. I think you went two for two for three there. There you go. All right, nice. Good game. Good game. I liked it. Good game. Okay, that leads us into the awards for the week. My favorite part of every show. Award number one is the Overbearing Parent Award. This one, this week, I gave to Dallas Cowboys coach Mike McCarthy. Staring out into space, calling timeouts, not managing. By the way, eerily similar to Dak Prescott in the playoff game last year with the 49ers when he did the slide or he did the run and he couldn't, oh, yeah. couldn't manage the time right. So I give it to Mike McCarthy. So Mike McCarthy's father needs to call him tonight and have like one of those father-son talkings to, but one of those adult father-son talkings to, not like little kid Mike McCarthy. This is adult where like the grandpa is like, son, you're fucking up. <laughs> and, they, and they have like a, like a, a talk, you know, like on the, on the front porch. Over overbearing parent, you're gonna see that this this week. I think uh, Mark Davis. I, I think he's looking right now. Oh. What's, what's what's in front of him? Um, you know, it's a, yes, it's it's McDaniel's getting another shot at you know coaching, uh, but you know he's got a coach that really hasn't gotten it done in his career aside from being an assistant. And you have a quarterback who let's face it, good stats, but he hasn't gotten it done in the playoffs. So. You know, I think he's going to be a little overbearing this week. So you're saying Mark Davis, the parent, is going to give a stern talking to all those people? Yeah, uh, absolutely. Carr, Daniels, and like throw someone at Renfro. Put Renfro in there. Put Renfro in there. Yeah. I. That's a good. A good answer. Good answer. Award number two, the hot take award for the week. Here's my hot take. After watching today's game with Seattle at San Francisco, now. I believe Jimmy G's on a one-year deal. Um, I say after this year, they're extending him. I, oh. say, he's, I say they extend him. That's my hot take of the year. Yep, he's, he's going to take him, and they're going to say, like, this is our guy. Let's give him five years. Oh, there's no way. Hot take. Wow. Interesting, interesting. So hot. Take. So hot. I don't think you can handle it. It's so hot. Okay. My interesting take. Interesting. Is that I am rethinking my Super Bowl picks, and I'm just gonna go based on oh, come over, on. over, over. I'm saying, I'm saying, like we know we talked about fantasy Super Bowl picks. You know, my right now overreaction, week two, Sunday night, Giants Dolphins Super Bowl. What? Giants Dolphins Super? You know what? I would accuse you of of drinking too much, but I know you're clean and sober, so I, I don't know where I don't know what to blame. So, are you reneging on your Week One Super Bowl pick? No, we're, we're still, we're still going to. All right, I'm keeping your. I'm saying just a fantasy would be something. Okay. I'm saying an overreaction. It's overreaction. All right, that you no loose use of the hot take award, but I'm going to let you slide. All right, award number three. This is the cringeworthy award. By the way, I easily could have put the entire second half of the Raiders Cardinals game in my cringeworthy award. That would've been too easy, but my cringeworthy award for the week goes to. Not Matt Ryan, but the idea of Matt Ryan. Oh, so so throw in the GM who thought this was a good idea to bring yeah. in a guy who would go who would lose twenty four to zero. Yeah. Um, Jesus, so I want the idea of Matt Ryan. What 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 was the category again? I mean, the, the cringeworthy award. Oh, cringeworthy! Yeah, go out. You 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 picked a great one. Uh, the the cringeworthy though uh, award. From Thursday night, we didn't really talk about that game, but uh, Herbert possibly getting hurt. I don't know how serious it is. Mm. But that would be that would be a nightmare for San Diego. Yeah, he really took a hit, and he's Los he still sort of had a couple of great throws. Yeah, but but that <laughs> that, that 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 team is going to go only as far as he's going to take them. You know, hey, talk about body parts that are cursed on a team, ribs. Because remember that isn't that how Herbert got in the game in the first place? Didn't the first team quarterback accidentally get his rib? Which, by the way, he just something? filed. He just uh, sued. Uh, I they, saw they, that he's suing. Who double yeah, whammy for, for the Chargers for, for five million? 
<laughs> that isn't this a legitimate lawsuit though? It's like you it could you be, it could be. I mean, you hurt you my think? ability to earn a living. Yeah, but wouldn't you think that like, hey, um, you know, it's not like you were doing this procedure like on a hospital bed or something like that. Like, it's like craziness. You know, got a screaming crowd. You got coaches probably yelling. Players trying to hype each other up in the beginning of the game. You got this this quarterback who's probably a little nervous. He's week one starter, you know. And and I'm sure it's not the ideal place to administer. I, I figure when when something is going into your chest, you you know it, you're, you're thinking it's a little risky doing this on the sideline of an NFL game. Right. So I don't know. So you're saying the the lawsuit is definitely there. There's a case. There's a case. I, I just don't know if it's gonna be if it's gonna be worth what uh, uh, what the quarterback thinks it is. Hmm. All right. I think someone like you should represent him. Next award. This is the Would You Rather Challenge. Okay. This week, here is the challenge. Would you rather have Jimmy G bake a cake with your wife or girlfriend, or have me drive you home after this embarrassing Raiders loss? <laughs> oh, I, I don't want Jimmy G anywhere near uh, uh, my house. So, yeah, I'll, drive, I'll take you home. No, I'm taking you home after the loss. Like, oh. I'm driving, and I'm oh. angry. Oh, that's dangerous. That's throat, <laughs> that's throat rage. Ugh. I, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll take my chances with you. I was in a bad mood, dude. I was, I was not happy. I was not happy with, with life or, or anything. Also, I'm willing to change this would you rather to, would you rather have Jimmy G bake a cake with your wife or significant other or watch the new CBS drama Fire Country? <laughs> Did you see this, <laughs> this commercial? <laughs> I got to tell you, I, I was into it and then I was not into it by the end of the, the commercial. I'm with you. It does seem... It so looked good. Bizarre. Yeah. It looked good for thirty seconds, and then like, and then all of a sudden the, they were fighting, and I it, maybe fire it just is always a good hook, you know, firefighters, forest fire. Remember, remember the movie Backdraft? I don't think that movie's good yet. I, I'm pretty sure I've seen it five and a half times. Absolutely. All right, award number five, the Ethan Hunt, you've never seen me upset award. This goes to the Tom Cruise movie that most represents this week in the NFL. I'm going with the movie Magnolia for me. We had a lot of star power in Magnolia. We had a lot of good scenes. Ultimately, I didn't like the ending, though. I do not like Magnolia as much as other people like it. And I did not like this week at all. I'm with you. That, that's a good one. Magnolia's a good one. Do you like Magnolia, the movie? Eh, not, not really. Yeah, okay, so you're with me. Like I feel like it it's getting started for like 45 minutes. Yeah. Like it's building, but then like 45 minutes and you're like, what's the point of this? And then we all have to pretend like it's awesome because it's I think it's Paul Thomas Anderson, I think is who did that movie. Yeah. yeah. And Cruz has some great scenes. He, he's great in it, but ultimately I don't feel like anything happens in it, and I was mad at the end of it. I was split between this and Valkyrie. Whereas Valkyrie is like, oh, this is a good movie. And then you were like, oh, Tom Cruise is a Nazi. <laughs> yeah. This is bad. This is bad. This is bad look. I think Man Magnolia is the better one. All right. So you're sticking with Magnolia or do you have yeah. your own? No, that, that's a good one. That, that's, a, that's a really good one. Okay. Last award. Who won the week? I have three nominees. Big comebacks. Jimmy G. Or teams who are now one and one. I, I, for me, I think it's Jimmy G. I think he won the week. I, I, in, in a way, I don't know if he won the week as much as the Niners won the week. You know what I mean? As far as like, now they look like genius is working it out with him. You know what mm, I mean? That's true too. Yeah, they look like like they were they had this in their back pocket in case. Right. So, I, but but what I think won the week ultimately, um, we had. No, uh, you know what, D D Jimmy G. I mean, yeah, he won the week. He's he's a starter again. Just the way he came off the field and the the sideline was like embracing him, like yeah, you're our guy, like instantly. Yeah, and he's yeah, smiling. Yeah, Kittle, Kittle got up, and you know he was in street clothes, but he got up and you know made a big deal. So yeah, that, that's cool. 
All right, you agree Jimmy G won the week? Do you have any nominees? No, that's good. <laughs> well, that leads us to Monday night, the doubleheader, first of three this year. Tennessee at Buffalo, Philadelphia at Minnesota. I'm going to go with a surprise since apparently one and one is the new thing. I'm going to go with Tennessee over Buffalo in their game. And I say Buffalo is now going to be one and one. Oh, I could have disagreed with you more. Yeah, see, I knew you wouldn't like that. I I don't like that at all. Tennessee just did not look good against the Giants. I know it's just one game. It's the opener. But, man, they they looked terrible. Um, Mm -hmm. And and so – I, I, and, I, and I think Buffalo was rolling last week. Um, they were. I agree with all that. I just think this is a one in one season for everybody. Okay. Okay. Good. What, what's your Monday score night? What's I your think score that there? I think that's the early one as yeah. well. So a weird afternoon game. Just well, like I, some- I, you know, Patrick. It's funny you, you mentioned that. Uh, well, of course, I'm going to go with the Bills. You're going. You're going with Titans. But um, I remember when when we were kids. Monday night football started like after seven o'clock. I think and, it was a little after seven. You're right. And they, they, they did like maybe like a ten minute pregame or you right. know five, five to seven minute pregame. Mm-hmm. And, but then it was like kickoff. You know, you saw it maybe like the tail end of uh, of um, warm ups and you know maybe an interview or two on uh, uh, pre pre coin toss. But it, it used to uh, start at after seven, and we'd be like finishing up like at ten thirty at night. Right. Yeah, like if you were young enough, your parents wouldn't let you stay up for the whole game. They would say like, all right, you can watch the first half. You can watch the third quarter, but come come 930, you're going to bed. Or if it was a special yeah. occasion, like you finish your homework, you can watch all of all of Monday night. Right. No, yeah. So, yeah, I, I just remember that. And, and also, remember- like Monday night would come on. Like it would hit you with the music oh, and you would be well, so yeah, pumped. You'd be like, bum, 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 dun, dun, dun. And then like, like the one, the one helmet and it would be shot of the stadium you'd be like yeah yes i yeah. also miss the, the good year the good year blimp view of the stadium with the right. old yeah you know that, yeah that and then you would have the like the Al Michaels would give like a little synopsis of of the team leading in. Like it would show Brett Favre like, Brett Favre and the Green Bay Packers won last week decidedly, but if they want to keep their playoff hopes alive, they're going to need to beat the Bears. And you'd be like, they need to beat the Bears. Yeah. And then they would do the flip the other team and stuff like that. It would just get you so jazzed up for the game itself. So Monday night, Monday night. I miss those Monday nights. Do you? Seven oh, o'clock. It's just so it was so much better back then. We had we because I think when you and I started watching Monday night, it was Deerdorf, uh, Gifford, and Michaels. It would have been yeah. You're right. That was the trio. That was a trio, right? That was good. Yeah, we had Gifford, we had Al Michaels, Dan Deerdorf. That's right. You could have. That was in the era. If you would have just said the word Deerdorf, I would. I would Monday night football. I would have uttered out Dan. <laughs> Someone's yeah. like, Dear Dora, Dan, Dan, Dear Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and in the late game, Monday, Philadelphia, Minnesota, I am going to go with the Kurt Cousins express train continues to roll and, of course, is going to trick us in about two and a half months Yeah, because they're going to fall apart. But I'm going to go Minnesota over Philadelphia. I, I, like, I like your pick. I'm going to go with the Vikings. I'm going to go uh, – 24 to 13. Okay. Well, as you know, it was a difficult Sunday. I was in disguise for the first first bit of the game. You're good people. First bit of the show. So now I'm back. So, Omar Carmona for the Sunday Night Talk, week two in the books. Thanks for listening, everybody. Have a good week. See you next week. Okay, that is it. That is the show for week two on the Sunday Night Talk. Wow. Was that a rough week for me? You saw what I had to deal with. You saw it. You felt my emotional pain. It's going to take a lot to bounce back from this. Meanwhile, 49ers and you Jimmy G heads. What, you guys want a parade? This is the happiest day of your life. All right. I'm not going to get off on a little rant and make myself upset. You know I can't handle that. Forget all that. 
I want to thank everybody who came out to this stand-up comedy show this last Friday. I appreciate the attendance, and we had a great show as well, and there are more coming. I will update you on the channel, on all my socials as well, so be on the lookout for that. Don't forget, if you love running it back, if you love the Sunday Night Talk, give my channel a subscribe. Hit the button. It helps. I appreciate it as well. So, how's your Sunday night? Are you one in one as well? It seems like everybody is. Well, not me. But if you're one in one, I say you're doing all right. It's Sunday night. You got a whole week ahead of you. So, cheer up. Two games tomorrow night as well. Look at Carmona. He's as happy as can be. He wants to get on the defense team of that one Chargers quarterback. All right, forget about that. I'm putting myself in a mood. For Omar Carmona, for me, Patrick Mears, and the Sunday Night Talk, thank you for listening. I will see you next week.